Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, traders. Steve here at Logic FX Trading, and welcome to another lesson in our Competent Trader series. What we're going to do here today is an introduction to trading analysis and forecasting. And our trading analysis, or our section on trading analysis, will be divided into three areas. First one's identification, second one's interpretation, and the third one's extrapolation. Identification basically means taking the knowledge that we've learned from Elliott Wave Theory and putting it onto live charts and, and start to learn how to identify the different waves and the different structures. Once we've done that, we learn to interpret. In other words, we interpret what the structures that are currently being made, what they're going to do, what they are doing, and how they fit into what's happened in the past and once we know that we can then extrapolate or forecast what's going to happen next and we'll do various lessons under the auspices of those three sections but before we do that let's just get an, a general overview of what it is that we're trying to do now I can remember as a child or as a uh, being in school and um, we were always taught when doing examination questions to read the question carefully and answer the question. Um, <clears throat> because as kids we often see a question about whether it's history or science, whatever, and we rush ahead and write down everything that we know about that subject matter. Rather than actually reading the question, and answering the proper question that's been asked. Now, I don't know what education is like today. Um, it might all be ticking certain boxes to show you have the information. But when I was being educated, you actually had to think of the words yourself and write them down to show that you understood what the subject matter was and that you could interpret it. So, having said that, that's what we're trying to do here and well, I want to start by posing the question what is the question what are we actually looking for from a point of view of trading opportunities because after all this is what this is what everything that we do is all about it's about doing the analysis of the charts identifying the high probability trading opportunities and then obviously using our trading strategy to make the maximum profit out of that opportunity. So what I find that most um, new traders or inexperienced traders do is that they they focus in on the last hour or so or even the last four hours. They focus in on this and they try and work out what's going on here and some of the times they get it right and some of the times they get it wrong. Unfortunately, when you get it wrong, it often nullifies what profits or gain you've made when you've got it right. So as I've said before, trading is all about an accumulation of probabilities. So the higher your probability is at each level of whether it's your interpretation, your identification, your extrapolation and your trading strategy each time you do any one of those steps you need to ensure that you're increasing your probability of getting it right and it's not accumulation it's not any one thing it's not any one indicator or any one wave or any one um part of your trading strategy it's it's everything together including your psychology and when you bring all of these things together and as you get more and more experience, what you're actually doing is you're increasing your probability of getting it correct. And once you have the probability on your side, like anything, if you've got a weighted dice or a weighted coin, each time you toss it, there's more chance it'll fall the way that you think it's going to fall rather than the, the, <clears throat> rather than the other way. So that's what we're trying to do. Now we've, we've discussed step one analysis before and I just want to yet again we'll start with step one analysis and we go back 
we go back to the weekly chart or the daily chart and here we have a two day chart and the reason I'm taking this two day chart is to show you what the question is and the question is when we want to trade this is what 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 we want to trade this you see all of these these are all impulses waves and I guarantee if you've got down there and did your analysis you'll find that most of them are either third waves or fifth waves that's a third wave that's a fifth wave that's a third wave and a fifth wave combined and if we got down to that's probably the fifth part there that's your third wave that's your fifth wave and sometimes you'll get a first wave that comes down quite sharply but most of the time or at least 50 percent of the time as you know the first wave can end up coming right back down on itself and if it doesn't do that there's also a high probability it'll at least come right back down to you know the 61.8 percent fib or even lower so what we are really looking for is these moves these are the moves that will make you a lot of money very quickly without having to worry about is it going to come back down on me should i get out here etc etc because these are the big impulsive waves and as we know from our earlier wave theory the third wave is usually the longest and it's never the shortest so what does all that mean to our exam question analogy as it were well it's this is that we need to be looking for third waves in order to do our training which means we need to be patient and if we look at this on a large scale or a large time scale and we've analyzed this a lot of times before this is essentially a one two three four five coming up there's your identification guys this a b c sorry this um one two three four five is an a in theory in elliott wave principles in elliott wave theory this is an a but remember guys i said it once i said a hundred times none of this is painting by numbers and that's where the interpretation has to come in and yet again it's about the probability of what it is not what it will definitely be therefore if that's an a the probability is is that we will get a b wave of some sort next that's what we're looking for and all of that is based on our identification of what's happened before our understanding of elliott waves and the principles and our extrapolation of what should happen next so according to those three areas of of uh, understanding and experience what we should get next is some sort of b now what the b looks like that's the thing that's completely open to um speculation as it were when it start that's open to speculation but that's the wave that we're looking for we're not looking for all of the business that's going on down there at the moment once it starts to look like we're putting in a b wave that's when we get interested so then you say to yourself well if that's all you're doing then you know how do you have how long do you have to wait do you have to wait weeks or months to get a trade well no because once it starts then we trade this that took 2013 2014 that took over a year guys so for a year there was loads and loads and loads of opportunities to trade all of the majors because remember this will reflect what's happening in every other pair that the dollar this is the us dollar run here so for that period of time for that year there were lots of trades in there for that period of time lots of trades the whole of last year look at that coming right down lots of trades and then this last few months lots of trades we, we've analyzed this 
in great detail, lots of trades. So it isn't a case of having to sit and wait constantly, but when it's in a position where you're not getting an impulsive wave, then we need to be very careful. So what do we do in those times? Well, obviously we constantly analyze on a daily basis. We watch what's going on. And the more you watch it and the longer you watch it and the longer that you analyze it, and the more history you have of charts and predicting it right, will build your confidence in what's going to happen next. And when it starts to happen, you've been waiting for it for a week, for a month, or maybe for six months. And when it starts to happen, you know what's happening and therefore you can trade with confidence. In the meantime, we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of other things to analyze and look for these third waves and these fifth waves. Within a correction, because at the end of the day, this is a correction and there's a nice move there, Within a correction, we can find impulses, but they're a lot more difficult and a lot less predictable than what an impulse like that is or that. Remembering that's within a an impulse. That's an A. Or sorry, that's within a correction. It's an A wave, which is within a correction, but the scale off it's big enough for us to make good money when it's moving there. That's big enough to trade, but it can get messy. Look at that. Look how messy that is. That's difficult to trade. So the times that things are going difficult, it's usually because you're in a corrective phase. Look at that corrective phase there. Now, if we zoom in on that, if we go zoom into that, that'll look massive. If we go down to four hours, let's see. Okay. There we have an impulse. You could make good money on that. But look at how they're moving, guys. You're going to get stopped out a lot. You're going to be struggling with this. Now, we can't do anything about that. That's what the market's doing. But when it's in these corrective phases, it's very, very difficult to trade and it's very, very difficult to predict. When it starts doing something like this, it's been in this, look at this. This has been in this corrective phase. And the whole time it's in there, we're analyzing it. And then look what happens. It comes up in a very messy first wave. We get a second wave that comes down by the looks of it at least 50%. Let's just measure it. comes down exactly to 61.8% and then it breaks the structure because remember we'll be focused in even closer in this watching this structure it breaks the structure it comes back down that's the probably the first wave of your third wave one two third wave that's the wave we want because if you get into that from down here and if you've watched the um, sequence trading and the trade initiation if you get into a trade in this down there and let it run you're into profits you can move your stops along as you go then it's going to make some sort of correction we don't know whether it's going to correct back down a bit deeper and whatever that's personal choice and we'll look at this on a daily basis in the uh, the uh, trading room and we'll make our decisions based on that when that structure breaks again we're into another impulsive wave then it has a little stutter and another one and then we get that now <clears throat> I'll uh, pose a rhetorical question here would you prefer to trade that or that, or that, should I say. Well, obviously we prefer to trade that. So the question that we're trying to answer, the analysis we're trying to do, is get ourselves to a high probability situation where we're trading that move up there. Look at it. 
look at it once you get that away depending on your personal trading strategy you could potentially trade this all the way up here and once it gets to there remember we're looking at it every day <clears throat> then we start to decide what's going on now well this we're looking for a fourth wave what's it going to do now yet again do you want to trade that or do you want to trade that yet again it's a bit choppy that one there and then this was our first wave of our a wave this is our a wave that's the second wave of our a wave and then away we go third wave from there down to there <clears throat> so how do you know it's the first wave and the second wave well that's what we do in the analysis every week every day and we use our indicators and we use our knowledge and obviously we don't know all the time but when it's a high probability situation that's when we make our big money and all the money you make in situations like that will more than make up for any mistakes or any um, trades that you get into up here looking for that that's what we're looking for when this happens we're looking for that given our knowledge that that's the fourth wave and this A wave should at least come back down into that zone. So when it's done that, we know from our analysis that it should at least be that length, given the quality. And then when it gets down into the fourth area, we start to count and we say to ourselves, based on the knowledge we have, based on our experience, based on Elliott wave theory, this now looks like not a simple a b c for an a wave and an a b c for a b wave but this is a five wave structure one two three four five and because that happened once we got to this position we knew we were going to get a fifth wave we knew that that was going to come and there were great profits to be made there now we're in this situation let me just clear these now we're in this situation and what are we expecting next <clears throat> well it certainly looks like this fifth wave is over and the reason I say that is because this looks to me like a one, two, three, four, five. Similar to the the top end there. Um if we take this back to the daily that fifth wave didn't push far beyond the fourth wave. And in the same way that fifth wave hasn't pushed far below the fourth wave and there was a lot of debate about whether that was the fifth wave or not but it now looks as though that that was the fifth wave and it's done and now we're into this corrective phase so what size must this b wave be well it has to be of the same order of magnitude as that whole wave but since it's a fifth wave and since we know from Elliott wave theory that the fifth wave in position A is never the whole wave that means that this isn't finished so this is a zigzag with a 5 a 3 and a 5 that will be the complete A wave at the moment we are there which means we need to look for something like that. Will it look exactly like that? No, it won't. It could look like that. It could look like that. It could come a bit deeper and then go. 
But what we do know is from here, from this area, not exactly from here, from this area, we're looking for a wave to come up like that. That's what we're waiting for at the moment. That's what we're looking for. Okay, guys, the whole point of this exercise is to give you an overview of what we're trying to do in our analysis and our forecasting. And from here, what we'll do is we'll break this down into what we said at the start, our identification, our interpretation, and our extrapolation. Okay, that will probably do it for this little video. Bye for now.